it's the hundredth anniversary, we think, of the Brazier today, Adam. Oh, congratulations, thank, everybody. Thank you very much to all women who may be listening right now or are listening right now. When I say we think, because there's some conjecture, I think, about whether it was actually designed in the form that it is now, the modern bra in 1907 or 1910. We're going with 1910. And Lynn Widrum is with us. She's the owner of Brava Lingerie. I love saying that word. In Paran. Hello, Lynn. Hi, Lindy. Very nice to meet you. And you. What do you. you. What's your theory, 1907 or 1910? I'm actually told the first bra was patented in 1914. Really? Yes. Um, a Mary Jacobs in New York created a bra with two handkerchief, handkerchiefs and a pink ribbon and patented it. And then she sold the patent to Warner's Corset Company for $1,500 and it was actually valued at $15 million. So she did well. Uh, sorry, I think you can see my face. $15 million straight away or just recently? I don't know the time lapse, but it was obviously a very successful launch for her. Two handkerchiefs. And a pink ribbon. <laughs> I'm sorry, just the thought of yeah. words. It's just ridiculous. So she obviously didn't go jogging after that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the support would have been quite loose, I would have imagined, but she did well. It, it's an odd sort of thing in some ways, I th I, and I'm glad Adam's here, and I wanted a, a man to be here when we talked about this, because let's face it, bras are a, are a thing of mystery for men in, in many sorts of ways, perhaps not so in much what, as they used to be. In what way? Well, what don't the, I know about them? Well, the old story, not so much now, because, you know, you're a sophisticated man of the world, but uh, once upon a time in the beginning, it was all about how to undo them and, and how to, what, what do, you, do you say that looks lovely, or what makes something a good bra, what makes something a bad bra? Yeah, men are still quite confused. Are they? Yeah, there's a very, very small minority who understand bras, understand why we wear them, understand what works in a bra and why it should be fitted properly, those sorts of things. But most bras, <laughs> most <laughs> men who walk in the shop look a bit like Adam our Scott friend now. here. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, most of them don't know a lot about them. Most of them love black, red, lacy. Yes. They don't know much about why we wear the bras and what... And what and they're what, meant to do. Yeah, what difference it but makes. But it's not just about, you know, some kind of attractive feature no, for, for someone to look upon. No, it's not all about the boudoir. Right. It's about the way our clothes are shaped. Are we better at it now in terms of the, the sorts of bras that are being made? I can remember what my poor grandmother had to wear and the, the, some of the most uncomfortable paraphernalia you can ever imagine yeah. putting on somebody. But how did you know they're all flesh coloured? <laughs> 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 we are so much better at it now. Um, uh, there's a lot of bras that are moulded to give an uplift and they're not the sexiest looking bras but they really make the clothes look so much better. Um, women feel much better in bras like that. They can see their clothes have changed, they look slimmer if they're wearing the right bra. Um, there's plenty of other bras that do a great job as well and look really pretty as well. So there's, there's a huge range out there and yeah, they've improved incredibly. How long have you been in the game for, Lynn? Three and a half years. Right. So uh, it, when people walk in and, and we're talking about men walking in and, and asking what they want and women doing the same thing, what's the general theme of the request? For us, it's probably a little different to other stores because we specialise. We specialise in D cup and above. Oh, right. And guys generally wouldn't know what cup size oh, yeah we've had men come in a lot of women don't know either most women don't are. know <laughs> we've ha i had a man come into the shop with his wife's wet bra in his backpack you know, <laughs> <laughs> he's taking off the washing line so he got the right bra for her yeah, and it was a great gift but no most women don't know what size they wear they've been wearing the same one for years and years their bodies changed they've gone through childbirth or weight loss weight gain all of those things but they're still wearing they're still asking the same size bra and don't really know why they're uncomfortable or why they don't look any better is there is, is there something in it too where a lot of women hate the thought of you know becoming a 14 or a 16 or an 18 or whatever size they mm. happen to go up and when the reality hits that they, the same thing about a bra size yeah that, that they'll say well I've always been a B cup but yeah. in fact when you measure them they're a D and, and they, just, just, they just don't want to admit to that. That's right. But often when they are a D, we find their backs gone down. <laughs> they come in and they say they're a 16D. But when they're measured properly, they may well be a 14F or even a 12F. That happens incredibly often. They're wearing a bra that's far too loose on the back and it's not supporting them. But they've be, just been wearing the same size for so long. They, they don't realise how much better there is out there for just them. Just going back to the 1914 patented bra, <laughs> do, do you know what women were wearing then? I instead? think it was corsets and, and whalebone and probably 
things like just tight little vests. I think a lot of people probably didn't really wear bras. But it has gone on from there a great deal. Um, in the 20s, they were. it was all about um, dancing the Charleston. Yeah. And very flat-chested. Very flat-chested. They didn't want bras that enhanced them then. They were flattening them at, in the 20s. But then in the 30s, they did. They went into um, separation and they, they discovered nylon and they discovered... they. They combined it with taffeta and lace and things, and they had rather beautiful things. And they also went for padding and wire, so the the shape was. So is that when what underwire first came yeah, in? Yeah, in the 30s. in the thirties. Yeah, yeah, in the forties, the war meant lingerie was scarce and uh, it was really hard to get. Um, then in the fifties. Damn war. Damn war. <laughs> Sad, isn't it? In the fifties, it was the sweater era, era, and um, there was tight fitting twin sets and um, missile shaped bras and the time of Jane Mansfield and Sophia Loren, they had push-ups and strapless and all kinds of things. So it was a very innovative what did, what time. What did you call them? The missile? Miss shape. No, those pointy yeah. ones. Yeah, the point. Yeah. Uh, is that what you mean? Yeah, a bit like Madonna, Madonna. did. <laughs> yeah. But not quite yeah. as pointed. No. Not quite as cone-shaped. No, right. that's right. But yeah, she was. Um, she sort of morphed into... <laughs> and 60s, of yeah. course, was all about burning, burning the bra. Burning the bra, yeah. It, they were seen as objects of oppression. And the lingerie manufacturers were accused of pack packaging breasts according to the men's specifications mm -hmm. rather than the women's. So all the, the bras were um, quickly dis disappearing in the 60s, but didn't last long. 70s? Back. 70s. At, it was the era of lycra and exercising in abs and thighs, and it was seen as an emp empowering thing then. Women were quite happy to show their bras. They were doing the roller rollerblading and yeah. things in, in their bras. and. Um, looking really good and really toned. And that's kind of similar to what we've got today in so many ways. Very we? much so, yeah. Um, as we said, in the 80s, Madonna turned it into outerwear and with the conical shapes. And then there was the Wonder Bra. And this decade, really, I, I guess it's been more about the natural, uplift and natural. Um, we're seeing you know, the natural um, campaigns for women looking more natural now without makeup, without structure. So plus size on catwalk, that sort of thing. So I think it's more about us being ourselves. See, it's a whole world, Adam, you knew nothing <laughs> about. Yes, yes, being yourselves with chicken fillets, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a small portion, gotcha. yeah. speaking of chicken. Uh, yeah. Lovely to have you in here. Thank you so much, Thanks, Lynn. Andy. Lynn Windrum, the owner of Brava Lingerie in Paran, just talking about the history of the bra, given that we, as I said, it's the, the jury's out as to what the birthday is, but there are some people who say the day, well, certainly this year is the anniversary.